As colleagues know, it's once again the time of the year when Congress gets to work putting together the next budget. One of the initial steps in the process is typically for the President to send up a blueprint of his own, laying out his priorities as members continue to work through conversations here as well. The President's budget is being released this morning, and here are a few things we should know about it already. It builds on the progress made earlier this month on defense, uh, prioritizing more of the resources our service members need. It builds on progress made earlier this month on border security, calling for investing in more of the infrastructure and technology our law enforcement officers actually need. And unlike any of President Obama's budget blueprints, this one actually achieves balance. The provisions I mentioned are encouraging to see. I'm sure they'll serve as guideposts for Chairman Enzi and the rest of the Budget Committee as they move forward on this matter. I also appreciate the President's commitment to slowing the growth of mandatory spending, which, if left unaddressed, could eventually limit our ability to invest in nearly anything else, as the debt and the interest we have to pay on it increases and crowds out spending on other major priorities. This Thursday, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin will testify before the Finance Committee on the budget blueprint, and with it, the administration's interest in tax reform. I know we're all eager to learn more from him and look forward to working with the administration to make our tax code simpler and fairer for the American people and American businesses. Over the years, our tax system has grown only more complex and more punitive, putting both individuals and employers at a disadvantage while also inadvertently incentivizing American companies and jobs to leave this country to go overseas. It's evident that we need serious reforms to our tax code, the type that will help families keep more of their hard-earned money while also helping businesses put more Americans to work. By implementing tax reform, we can again encourage investment in our country, allowing American businesses to expand, hire more workers, improve wages, and offer better benefits. In turn, families will have access to more opportunities and will be better positioned to actually get ahead. It's been over three decades since we passed comprehensive tax reform, and it's past time that we do something about it. Fortunately, we now have an administration that shares this interest in finally improving our tax system instead of making it even more convoluted and constricting, and without demanding a trillion dollars in new taxes for the government. Easing the burden on the middle class and getting the economy moving again are top concerns here in the Republican Senate. We understand that for the past eight years, too many families struggled under the weight of an economy that failed to reach its potential. Too many took home wages that didn't meet their needs. Too many saw opportunity slip away. We understand that these families deserve a change in direction and expect each of us to do what we can to get the economy moving again soon. That's why we passed legislation to provide relief from Obama-era regulations that stifle growth, and it's why we'll keep working to advance more legislative solutions that can help hardworking Americans. Tax reform is one way we can do just that. This is an area where Republicans and Democrats have been able to find some common ground in the past, and I'm hopeful our friends across the aisle will join us in working toward comprehensive tax reform one more time. Either way, the Republican Senate remains committed to enacting tax reform so that we can help encourage American investment, boost job creation, and promote wage growth all across our country.